Hello, hello everyone. My name is Pen Chen. All the authors from Tsinghua University. My topic is the rapid crisis packet loss notifications in data center. I I quite like the cooking, so I will I will work in the kitchen. There's a lot of things need to do. There's the, maybe the car slice or the or the open the bottom. So for each for each kind of things, for each kind of things, we need a specific tools to to tackle this problem. But uh, I I always f uh, don't remember where is this. So I find another thing. This the this a multi-function scissors. This uh, can can do the all things using the scissor. So. I think it's a quite seem like the the TCP is in the in the now data center networks. TCP face a lot of problem, so we the for each problem maybe as a a, a a many solution to solve it, but we we cannot hard to to combine it together. So we ask uh, whether we can find one simple TCP complementary mechanism to solve all the problem. Let's, let's, let's look at each problem step by step. The first is TCP incast. It's very famous problem in we, we ever said. And uh, we think this, uh, this uh, TCP incast can, uh, the no solution cannot meet all the requirements of the MapReduce. For example, we can we can get the MapReduce, the sender, uh, the number of senders in MapReduce is quite large. But in today's solution, uh, DC TCP and SA TCP cannot meet this uh, such a large number. Uh, and they have mentioned in the paper uh, whether reducing the RTO mean uh, can, can solve this problem. I, I will tell you not. Why? We do the experiment, and uh, we, we found that there's a lot of, we think it's a throughput cliff. Uh, happened uh, when the when used the uh, RTO mean to set to the 10 mega uh, milliseconds. We we have a deeper understanding of it. We found that it's uh, centralized the package loss uh, increase a lot of the timeout and uh, to uh, to lead these things happens. The, the, we, we can find that uh, after the point of the throughput cliff, the throughput uh, uh, decreased dramatically and increased gradually. So we think a wide timeout after a large number of package loads is a key to meet the requirement of the map reduce. Then we will see the TCP unfairness. In the internet, the multi bottleneck flows is uh, always suffer the low throughput in the internet. Um, this uh, this be present in the Sikom 1990s. It's a so uh, so old paper. So I think it's uh, maybe it's the uh, same things happens in the data center networks. Uh, maybe you say it's a um, it's a different because of the uh, because of the uh, different round trip time different. Uh, topologies and uh, different uh, bandwidths. But uh, what happens to the multi bonic flows in data centers? We also get experiments. Uh, we get the, this. We will explain step by step. The first, uh, in the high package loss ratios, the, uh, the multi bonic flows uh, suffer the significant low throughput. We can we can get the result. It's the same as the internet, but in the low low uh, low packet loss ratios, uh, they, they will not this phenomenon happens. Uh, we only find the TCP outcast is the present in the NSDI to uh, 20, uh, 2010. It's a it's a unfairly high throughput happens in this in this scenario. So. According to these two paper, we can we can make sure that the primary cause of TCP outcast and the low throughput is the is because of TCP timeout. So we think if we avoid TCP uh, TCP timeout, we will we will tackle the problem of TCP unfairness. Then we consider TCP out of order problem. Uh, why why we think this uh, old old problem because a lot of redundant re, uh, redundant 
uh, redundant links uh, exist in the data center networks now. So uh, multiple routing technic uh, technicals become very important. Uh, now it's a lot only a lot uh, only a lot of the this technicals is based on the flow based splitting schedule. Uh, why why didn't why people don't do ideal the packet level schedule? It's because TCP auto problem. They they cannot use the packet level schedule to ha uh, to to take uh, tackle this problem. Uh, now TCP using a fixed threshold to distinguish between the out of order or the lost. They will cause a lot of problem. It's mentioned in uh, in very old papers. Uh, I don't want to to talk it talk it in the in this presentation. So I just uh, make the conclusion. Uh, a currently distinguish between the lost or out of package can tackle the TCP out of order problem. The, the, the last one, I think maybe is a quite hot topic is about uh, long curing completion time. Uh, we do the, the some, some people said that uh, because of the curing delay, it's a, a cost a long curing completion time. And uh, we will do another conclusion. It's about uh, we can we can see that it's about uh, twelve percentage of the of the experiment uh, suffer this problem. Uh, the, the 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 picture is a uh, is about uh, the 20, uh, 20 flows. That one flow suffers uh, uh, maybe the uh, 12, uh, fifteen min milliseconds uh, to finish this uh, finish this work. Uh, we 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 look the detail and found that it suffers many retransmissions and waste time to retransmitting. So we think retransmission delay imposes a significant influence on the curing completion time. Uh, we can easily get that the retransmission delay is composed of the retransmission time and the detection time. And uh, we think the retransmission time is the mainly depending on the uh, metro congression control mechanism. So we think the reducing the decretion time is a better way to improve the curing completion time. Depending on the 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 four TCP problems, we can we can conclude our goals. It's a, it's about three. The first is to avoid TCP timeout. The, the the second is uh, distinguish the the uh, which packet which packet is out of order or lost currently. This, uh, the second we need to reduce the packet loss detection time. So I I want to introduce my solution. We call this cutting payload. Uh, you can you can call it CP. Uh, there will just the three step. The first step is the we want to use this a switch to cut off the pay, uh, cut off the payload of the new package if the buffer is overflowed. You can see the package six didn't didn't have the payload, so we just uh, store uh, store uh, the header in in the storage, and uh, we we can prove that we only need a little extra buffers to store this. Uh, this header only. Uh, if the input traffic is lower than the output traffic, uh, increased uh, by increased by uh, thirteen times. Then, then we, when the receiver receives the payload cut packets, there's a which which is only contains the header. Uh, we will three step to do it. The first step is uh, to freeze the payload cut packets. And uh, we'll get two things. The first one is the start, uh, the start sequence number. The second is the packet length. Then we can generate the pack, uh, pack option. Uh, we use the we use the very similar as the uh, stack option to to design the pack option. We just uh, swam the left and the right edge of the block to to to. To indicate the the lost information, and uh, this uh, this can compatible with SAC because SAC, if uh, the in the traditional SAC, the, if the large 
uh, edge of the block is larger than the right edge of the block, they will they, they think it's a mistake, and they will they will explain the next block only. The se uh, the second uh, the third step is to send the pack uh, immediately for the reduced uh, detection time. Um, uh, the, the last, when the sender receiver the pack, we will do three steps. It's quite easy. The first is to freeze uh, the pack option and uh, to know which packet is lost. And then we will check the pack status. Uh, if the pack is received, we, we, we just ignore this information because uh, the receiver has successfully received this, received this. So we do do nothing. And if not, we will when we think this package is lost, we will try to uh, target the fast retransmission and the fast recovery and uh, retransmit to the lost package. Oh, depend on the, our design, we will we will get uh, some benefits. The first is to avoid the timeout. We use the payload card packet and uh, the pack to to maintain the self clocking. If we maintain self clocking, the timeout will not happen. Then we use the pack uh, to to get uh, to get the rapid process packet loss notification. Uh, they can dis uh, the sender can distinguish uh, uh, the the pack uh, the out of order and uh, the lost accurately and reduce packet loss detection time. Implementation. We implement uh, implement this algorithm in the NetApp PG card. Uh, it's a quite simple, so we only uh, introduce a less than two percentage increase in the resource usage, and uh, only only the two components uh, introduce extra delay. It's about uh, uh, fifty six narrow seconds. So. Well, I think in, uh, whether, uh, no matter the, the extra delay and the resource usage is acceptable in, today, uh, in today's switch. Finally, we will show the, some evaluation of, the, of our solution, and uh, we, we, can, we, can, we can see the, uh, the result. Uh, our method can achieve high throughput when the number of senders is large is it can meet the requirement uh, of the map reduce. Then we ev evaluate the TCP unfairness. We can see that uh, in the low packet loss ratios, uh, our measure CP can avoid the TCP outcast. It's uh, quite similar, uh, quite similar uh, as the serotic value. And then we, we can we can see in the high packet loss uh, rich, uh, ratios this can use the low uh, low throughput, but it cannot achieve the same as the serotic because of um, if you use different uh, congression control mechanism they will they will achieve different uh, result. So I think uh, the congression control mechanism is. Uh, this can affect this fair, fairness, but we we can ease the this this problem happens. Then we we'll, uh, we will look at the TCP out of out of order problem. Uh, we can we can see that we have solved uh, this problem and we can ch uh, achieve the serotic value, uh, the same as the serotic value as uh, in the right lines. Finally, as a uh, is the query completion time. Uh, we, we just uh, test in the two, two traffic patterns. The first is a realist, a realistic traffic, and the second is 10 times traffic. We, we just, uh, uh, we just uh, increase the size of the, uh, the size of the query and uh, the background flows to 10 times. We can get that. Uh, we can get uh, the the query complete time at 99th percentile is uh, about uh, decreased by the 40 percentage, and uh, in the 10 10 times traffic is is achieved more more better. 
than in the elastic traffic because uh, when the if the if the more congestion happens, more packet loss happens, our solution may be much better. So it does the say the conclusion. Uh, our method is a TCP contaminant method that can solve many TCP performance issues and is uh, compatible with other TCP protocols in data center networks such as uh, uh, DC TCP. We can we can we have a lot of results about uh, the uh, our our yes, uh, our solution uh, compared with the DC TCP. Then we didn't show uh, this in the presentation. Oh, so uh, we also release our source code is on the website. Thank you. Hi, um, really cool observation. So um, I was wondering if you actually need the pack mechanism. Uh, I mean, isn't the uh, cutting of the payload enough for most of the, what you want? Uh, I mean, w won't TCP retransmit anyway? So why, why do you need like another notification mechanism? Pack, your, your P pack, yeah. why do you think you need that? Uh, I think we need uh, more information about the uh, loss package. So we need pack to transmit the the lost information to the to the sender. If it's lost, we can use uh, okay. the same as SAC to 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 the SAC can. But can I thought the idea this. is to to avoid lost packets by sending just yeah. headers, right? So if you if the headers do make it, and let's say the the receiver processes them, generates the axe, then the sender can sort of do fast retransmit, right? So you don't. It looks like you might not need another mechanism for this, but maybe I'm missing something. Probably I'm missing something. Yeah. Uh, and the other observations, I, my mental model of switch buffers was they, they were per packet, right, rather than uh, byte oriented. So, is that the case? Like, because if the switch buffer is per packet, then your scheme won't help much. Uh, I think the. Uh, we we on, only use a uh, little uh, little buffers in the switch, and uh, it's um in our in our implementation is only two kilobytes. It's uh, maybe it's but but you assume side. that the switch buffer is organized as a sort of a byte array that you yeah. know a packet can use any small number of yeah. bytes. And I thought yes. in practice it's basically split uh, up in no, packets. No, uh, it it can queue. Is it uh, maybe the well, we implement is uh, our our the buffer is maybe it's uh, uh, 128 kilobytes, and uh, we okay. use a uh, three three to store the header, and uh, they will queue in the same is in the same queue, right? So we we just need a little the buffer to to store the header. Okay, thank you. Next question. Hi, Enrique uh, from UCSD. Um, I w my question is about the fairness uh, of CP and DCP because you showed some results on related to fairness. And uh, I was wondering what would happen if you had a high bandwidth flow uh, uh, trying to compete uh, through a bottleneck link uh, that uses CP with other small flows that don't, don't use uh, CP. Uh, so in my, in my understanding, the big flows uh, that are using CP, they will have a small self-clocking and then they will consume more bandwidth than the other ones. So that would be really unfair for the flows that are using only TCP. Uh, so my question is, are, are those results, uh, all, in those results are all the flows using CP or did you experiment uh, using a combination of flows using CP and flows not using uh, CP, using only TCP? So not flows, big flows using PAC and uh, other flows not using TCP. Did you uh, do you have like an explanation of is it fair or it's not fair? How how does it work? Oh, we we do the experiment is um, uh, the all the flows is using the CP. We get this result. Oh, and okay. uh, and uh, the this uh, bad the bad things is is a low throughput is all the all the flows using the TCP. We 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 just uh, do the, then didn't compare the 
TCP and the CP. We think it's a we think it's a it's a similar because CP only a a com, com, complementary of the TCP. But wouldn't uh, so wouldn't reducing the round trip time just for a few flows uh, cause uh, unfairness problems? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'll make sure. This. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Because the talk ended a few minutes earlier, so we can still take two or three more questions. Yes, please. So, uh, Switch today already have ECN, right? So, what's the difference that uh, uh, I didn't get the part where you cut the packet and send it to the receiver versus that uh, the switch to the ECN marking and let the receiving side re respond to that? Oh, uh, you see the ECN marking, right? right. Right. Oh, sorry. We we just uh, saw the implementation of uh, of our solution. Uh, we we show the ECM marking in the, our paper is um is uh, also the some components. We just uh, we we implemented, it, but we didn't mention in our presentation. So you can see my paper and uh, and they will do the ECM marking, and we can combine it together. So, uh, but uh, what's the additional? I didn't get. What's the additional that uh, work that the switch has to do? Oh uh, yeah, in your uh, just uh, just uh, change the switch net IPJH. Yeah, switch. what uh, what part changes? You, you say uh, the marking the header. So you need to do, do you generate a new header or you? you, you oh, uh, we just uh, had the pa packet load and the packet load have the ECM marker. This is contain this byte, right? So if I understand correctly, yeah. their proposal actually cuts the payload. In addition yeah. to marking just ECN field in the pay, uh, packet header. But what does this cut the payload by, uh, by uh, give the end the host compared just to marking that? I'm just curious. It doesn't give you much better indication. Well, it gives you the indication that the if some packets have to be dropped because of the shortage of buffer, yeah. the chance of delivering or being able to deliver pa that at least the packet header to the yeah. end host is increased because you make use of that you know short buffer more efficiently. Oh, oh so basically I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Then I think there is some question about the previous uh, uh, audience asked a question that uh, it typically that uh, you allocate on the switch you allocate the buffer based on the MPU, right? So I I don't know how flexible that uh, you can actually just uh, by squeeze more buffer packet into the buffer by just cut the uh, packet to be to have only the header. So I don't understand. Uh, Sorry, uh, you you just say the MPU. The, the the typically when you configure the switch, the buffer size is depending on the MPU size in the network, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's a not. It's so so basically, this requires a fairly uh, 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 a different uh, buffer allocation scheme so that you can be more flexible. No, no, we we don't change it. We just uh, we just use the the traditional one. So it's this is an interesting discussion. So can you take yeah. this offline? Yeah. Because I, I also wanted to ask one sort of fundamental question. So your design <laughs> is very interesting, but it requires data plane change at the, at the ASIC level. It also requires endo stack change because they have to understand tech, right? Yeah. Then if you were to do that, how would you compare your kind of solution to another sort of uh, well sort of thought out solution, which is just sending the feedback message directly at the switches? If switches have to drop these packets, they can actually send oh. right at that point back to the senders the packet header or maybe the di digest of the packet headers themselves directly from there. And that way they cannot, they don't need to save the pack, even the packet headers at all. Yeah. Right? And How would you compare that with your, your architecture? Oh, we dis we discuss, discuss this problem uh, in, in our paper. Uh, we just uh, we just think that uh, if you directly send back the pa uh, send back pa package, it's uh, the broken uh, the the TCP language the TCP semantic, and uh, I think this you if you use this method, uh, it's not a TCP solution. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's uh, quite like a QCN in the in the network, uh, and uh, we also uh, you you can see that. The discuss in the paper. We just uh, we just uh, think it's an it's a not, not a good solution to 
tackle this okay. problem. So let's and uh, yeah. it will introduce more the unfairness or something. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, very quick one. Could you get into a state where all of the packets are just headers and there's no good put? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you, you see the, the good part of the header, right? Uh, I, I show it. They can at least be transmit faster. Uh, in this, you can see it's about uh, four, 40 or the, it, it, when the, when the number of sender is uh, uh, 250 is about uh, 40, 40 megabit per second. That's about it. That's uh, two ways to yeah. send the packet. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so let's move on to the last paper in this session. And uh, by the way, let's thank again to the speaker. Thank you.